In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use SureForms, SureTriggers, and just about any good certificate issuing service that uh, you can find out there to issue a certificate to members of your courses or memberships for whatever reason you want to. Essentially, when they fill out a SureForm, we're going to issue a certificate and return it to the user all within the same interface really quickly. The tool that I'm going to use for this is called Certifier. It's one of the more known uh, digital certificate issuing uh, services out there. They have a free plan, which is why I'm using, choosing this option, so I don't have to pay anything. Uh, you get basically free forever. You get 200 certificates and badges uh, per year, right? So if you have more than that that you need to issue, you can pay for a plan, or you can look for another one of the certificate services out there. I don't have an affiliate link for this or anything. It's just certifier.io. Uh, integrates really well with Sure Triggers and makes this whole process seamless, as you'll see. We're going to get started by going into SureForms, and this was just released in one of their recent releases, actually the day of this recording. And it's still in an early form, but it is a little bit different from what I showed in my original SureForms video that I'll, I'll go ahead and, and link up here somewhere for you to check out. Uh, and I'll link it in the description too. Um, but essentially, we're going to uh, add a block here and we're going to choose to do a text block. And for our text block, we're gonna find the, or we're gonna ask for the name of what they would like to be on the certificate because, you know, Doug might be taking the course, but the certificate needs to say something else. Um, so we'll say name to be displayed on the certificate. Perfect, we'll make that required, we wanna have that. Then we're gonna add another field and we're issuing certificates only for members of our course or for members of our community. Whatever the reason is we're issuing the certificate, it's only going to go out to somebody who is logged in, possibly in SureDash or logged in uh, onto our website in some fashion, maybe in a Sure members course or something like that. Um, so we're gonna look for a particular field and this one's going to be the hidden field. And we're doing this because we don't want to ask them for their email. Um, we should already know it, right? So we're going to say email, and then I'll just put in parentheses hidden. And then here, because it's a hidden field, it won't be shown, but we want to populate it automatically with uh, the user's email. We can get there on the right-hand side under general by clicking the three dots under default value. And we're going to insert the user email. Now we'll have their email, uh, even though they don't know that they're entering it. They are, because they're logged in and we've got it. Now, technically this option is optional. We don't have to put this here, but I like to use it because there is a step particularly with certifier uh, that we can email the certificate to the user as well, um, which I think is a nice touch. So we're gonna leave it in. Uh, and that's it. That's the only form fields that we, we really need. We can put others in based on the certificate issuing a service that you're using. It may require more fields. You may want more data on the certificate. You can of course include hidden fields for, you know, I'll show you again here under the three dots. Any of this data can be brought into a hidden field, like the post or page that they're on, uh, a get parameter, a cookie value, that kind of stuff. This would be helpful maybe for inserting, um, you know, dates and stuff like that. Now I want to show you where you go in Certifier to get the the info um, for integrating with Sure Triggers before we jump in and do it. Uh, you just go in the upper right hand corner to this little uh, person avatar thing. Click on Settings on the left hand side. You'll see Developers. Click on Access Tokens. And then it's going to let you click this blue button to generate a new access token. You can copy that. Uh, you won't be able to see it again. So be sure to copy it when you do the integration with Sure Triggers. Here inside of Sure Triggers, you can go to Apps and then you can click Create New Connection. You can see here I already have Certifier added. It's just going to ask you for that access token and you'll be good to go. Okay, so I've created a new uh, automation. I'm going to add a trigger and it is going to be a SureForms trigger because the form is being filled out. There's our sure form. And this is where the process differs slightly from what I showed in uh, my original sure forms video. Uh, and, and it may change in the future too, right? If it does, I'm sure I'll mention it in an updated video, but I assume it'll generally be the same uh, because they've kind of gotten it to a pretty clean process now. So what we wanna do is under the form, uh, select event, form submitted, and then our connection is just going to be our website. I've got a bunch in here. I think this is the right one. If you select the, uh, the wrong one, when you click continue, uh, the screen that you go to here for configure will just be empty. Wait for that to load. There it is. Let's grab our members only cert issue. Click continue. It's going to want you to submit the form. That's totally fine. We'll come back over here and we'll just click our uh, little preview button there. It's going to open up the form. You can see it's invisible. Let's go ahead and fill in the name here. Uh, we'll say demo guy and we'll hit submit. Now you can see we haven't customized anything of the confirmation page yet. So this is just our, our little demo. Uh, 
even if we had customized this, it would have sat there and eventually said error because we haven't set up the integration to send it back yet. So that's totally fine uh, if you see that. We'll come in here. As soon as I swapped tabs, here it is. I'll click save. There's our submission data. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a new integration for our automation here, and we're going to search for certifier. This is where you would search for whatever tool you're using. I'm sure there's others, but this is the one that I like. We're going to issue a credential. Now on the certifier side, under groups, you'll create a group. I called mine, you know, certificate demo. Inside of your uh, group, you're going to create a new credential, uh, and you just basically give it a name, you can design it, and then click save. Pretty simplistic. Once you walk through that process, it will appear right here. Uh, so I'll just say issue credential, and then there it is, the, my account. I'll click continue. And now we're configuring what credential, what group, etc. So let's look for our group. There it is, certificate demo. I'll show you that over here. It lines up with the group that I created. The recipient of the certificate is going to be that name on our field for our cert here, the name to be displayed on it. So we want it to be the name to be displayed on the certificate. We'll click on that. The recipient's email is required. Now, this is why I said it's optional for you to put it on the form. For this particular integration with Certifier, it is required. Uh, you could always just put like one of your own like alias emails. Like I would put like Doug plus certificate filter at Combology.com. And then I'd create like a filter in my uh, Gmail to just delete those automatically. Uh, you can do that if you don't want them to get an email from this particular tool. Might be different with a cert tool that you're using. Um, but we did ask for that email and I do think it might be a nice touch to include it. So I'll just put at here and then I'll scroll down and I'll grab the, the email in the hidden field that we created. Issue date and ex expiration date, we're gonna leave empty. Um, we didn't really put expiration on ours and the issue date by default will be the day that the form is submitted. Let's go ahead and click continue and sure uh, triggers does require a test on the action. So we'll just click on that. It'll fire back that it was successful, et cetera. And we're gonna want that data later for use inside of um, our response. So all good there. That's technically all you need. This could have been done via API. If you have a cert service that doesn't have a sure triggers integration, most will have an API, um, in which case you'd open up sure triggers, search for API, choose the API action. And then I, I also could have done this uh, via API with certifier as well. Uh, you would choose things like get and post, a lot more complicated, uh, unnecessarily so, as long as you're using a service that integrates as beautifully as this one, we're done. It's kind of the beauty of using tools like this. Uh, okay, so that's it um, for these two steps. The last, very last thing that we need to do now is just to send something back to SureForms. So we're going to send data and under the connection, we're going to select our website, then click continue. And then the response URL, we just push at there and we scroll down and find response URL. That's one of the big changes that used to be a little bit different before. Super streamlined now. And now what's really cool is, remember when I submitted that form and it was just like, thanks for submitting the form. Now here, we're going to just put whatever message we want to be there. So for us, we'll put like, you know, congratulations on completing the course. Maybe we'll make that um, an H2. Uh, we can like center that. And then we'll say, click here to download your certificate, something like that. And then we'll center that as well. And then we can maybe like insert an emoji or something. I don't know, pointing at it there, something like that. You could put a file, you could put a certificate, uh, whatever you want to do. For this link to download, what's really cool about Certifier uh, as an option and why this works so well, and again, this is going to vary depending on the tool you're using, um, but in Certifier, you get this link, the special link with like a credential ID, uh, the ability to share your award and download it, um, you know, verify its authenticity, all, all kinds of amazing stuff, I guess. Um, <laughs> This is just one I threw together. Um, but what's cool about this is uh, in the URL bar, um, there's a link and the link is, well, you'll see it here in a second. You can't see it right now. Um, but if I bring it down into here, I'll put it in in here. It's like this credverse credentials uh, that they use to issue it. And then everything after that is the ID of the certificate, which in this demo here is like this green number here and it's in the URL. And that credential ID is actually in the data from when we issued our credentials. So it's available to us here uh, as part of our dynamic data. 
So I'm going to click this little uh, three circles that are stacked on top of each other right here. And I'm going to be looking uh, not in the SureForms response, but in the certifier response. And they actually send back the public ID to the certificate right there. So I've dynamically inserted it. And I like to do it this way so that I can hit Control C. And then I can come here to my certificate and I can highlight this text and I can enter in a link to the URL and paste it in there. And it pulls the dynamic data in no problem. And it just says click here to download your certificate. And you can add anything else you want to this little message. Um, and if you're using a, a service that gives you a file, maybe they actually give you a PDF. A certifier doesn't, I mean, it obviously lets you download it as a PDF, but it doesn't immediately give me a PDF link to use. But if it did, you could put that here dynamically and it would actually in the response in SureForms show the file. So that's pretty cool too. And I know they are working on this component, which is why I'm not like going out of my way to show it because I think they're going to make this even better. Um, but there we go. We'll keep it simple. Click here to download your certificate. I'll go ahead and click continue. Um, test action's fine. It's not going to actually do anything um, other than just say, you know, success and then just click save. And now our automation or workflow inside of Sure Triggers is complete. But we have one more setting we have to do back on the SureForm side. Over inside of our SureForm on the right hand side, we have to go to form confirmation. And instead of that success message, we need to change it to Sure Triggers response. This is another little piece that's different from my original video that I showed. It used to be a kind of like a merge tag um, that you would select like right here or short code. They used to have like an integrated response there. Now we're just choosing the Sure Triggers response, which is pulled in dynamically via that response URL that we put into Sure Triggers. And that's it, it's saved, let's we'll close this and we'll save our form. Now let's go ahead and test it. Okay, let's do our let's do our test. I'll put in Doug at Convology and click Submit. Shouldn't take too long. I know it uh, has to send the data to Certifier, issue the certificate, do all their stuff that they do on their end or whatever service you're using. And then, oh, there we go. As you saw, it came right back. Um, here is our response. Congratulations on completing the course. I kept mine very simple. Uh, click here to download your certificate, which would be just the link. There it is, Doug at Convology. Worked in real time, as you saw. Uh, I'll click back. Um, it's going to be broken now because I won't show it. I should have on my sure triggers. If this is uh, you in the future. Just go to configure here and on this link and say open in a new tab. There we go. Open in a new window. Add. Now, confirm. Update that. Click update in the same version. Now we can come back in here. Call us one cool guy. Click submit. And it'll go to certifier, jump back to sure triggers and come back to us here at sure forms. Cool. There we go. Now opened in a new window. Perfect. There's the cool guy one. And there it is. Uh, one thing that I think that they're working on, I hope they work on is the ability uh, here uh, to copy. Doesn't really make sense for our case. It copies literally everything. Um, but you get the idea. It's not a, not a bad integration at all. And imagine if that were right within your uh, sure dash or within your course or somewhere on your website using anything. It doesn't have to be the, the examples that I gave. This could be implemented and you can now offer certificate, any, basically anything you can get a certifier, badges, certificates, etc., cetera, uh, based on whatever data you want to send over and you can protect it using sure members or whatever tool that you use. I hope this demo was useful to many of you. I know I've had a lot of clients want to do stuff like this and I've always had to say, oh, gee, you know, I don't have any, you know, really slick way of doing it. But I think this is a great start uh, and as well as just one example of what the SureForms integration with Sure Triggers and multiple apps all coming together uh, can do for you on your WordPress site. Be sure to check out my other videos on SureForms. I'll put links down below in the description as well as my videos coming for SureDash and Sure members as well.